everybody, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I am so blessed and grateful for you stopping by this particular podcast. You see, the Lord is always, and I mean always, giving us His choice blessings. And He makes our lives so sweet full of flavor and and full of joy and full of life. (laughs) We are overjoyed by your connection with Full of Life Ministries. And it's exciting to see the outpouring of love from you all. Listen, thanks again for your support and thanks for your generosity to this ministry. Now listen, I have a question that I want to pose to you. And the question is, have you ever wondered how things unfolded in your life? Have you ever pondered on how the Lord orchestrated your life in a way where you stopped just to look back on how you overcame a certain moment when it appeared that the outcome would destroy you, but the Lord made a way out of no way. It still amazes me how many times that the Lord came through for me when I couldn't see no way out of my dilemma that I was facing. He created an avenue, an opportunity for my problem and I should say problems (laughs) to be solved. You see, I'm reminded of the passage of scripture that really keeps me focused on my ultimate goal. And that is to fulfill my purpose here on planet earth, to reach heaven. Yes, I wanna reach heaven to be in the presence of the Lord forever, to be able to be forever free to worship the Lord with no distractions, no interruptions, you know, to be able to see all of my loved ones, to know that I left something here on earth that God's stamp of approval has been signed by God where he simply says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. Listen, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Listen, people of God, that's my goal. That's my ultimate goal. But first, I must first fulfill my assignment here on planet Earth. Now, Ephesians chapter four, verses one through four. I'm going to say that one more time. Ephesians chapter four, verses one through four. It tells us, therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord. Being a prisoner for the Lord is not a bad thing, people of God. It says, I encourage you to live as people worthy of the call you receive from God. Verse 2 tells us, conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, here's a key Part of this verse that I want for us to embrace. He says in his word, accept each other with love. I want to read that passage of scripture one more time. Accept each other with love and make an effort to preserve the unity of the spirit with the peace that ties all of us together. You see, people of God, the will of God is focused on the present moment more than the future. 
And even though the future reminds us of the unknown, it shouldn't be an immediate concern because we know who holds our future. So the Lord gives us many assignments to perform, whether it's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ or to provide hope for the hopeless, being a bridge, people of God, to those who are afraid to cross over their past failures or they can't see no way out of a situation that appears to them a lost cause or the Lord impresses upon your heart to provide food or shelter to a person who are not only poor in spirit but just looking for help because their resources have run its course. You see, God has called us to live worthy of the call. I want to say that one more time. God has called us to live our lives worthy of the call. He wants us to remain humble before him, always demonstrating his love Everywhere we go, every day that we are alive, he wants for us to go above and beyond the call of duty. Because people of God, we are to preserve, preserve the unity of the spirit. This simply means we are to bring a community of believers and unbelievers together for the common good. We are to demonstrate our identity for the world to behold. And this unity is based on God's truth. It's based on his love for mankind. And it's based on us being humble before our God. So you have to understand people of God, our speech, must be full of love because unity is shaped and molded among believers and unbelievers in Christ. Not by denying our differences because we have many differences. And we have to understand the drama that comes along bringing unity to the core. We can't avoid drama. That's the reality of our world. But the whole goal of preserving the unity of the spirit is to create real 100% soul bonding relationships. That's, that's genuine. That's real. That's not going through steps and motions, it's actually being real before God and being real before your fellow brothers and sisters. This is how God's peace ties us together. Can you, can you see that? Can you imagine if we just understood the magnitude of what God wants to do for mankind? He wants to provide total healing for the body of Christ and for all unbelievers who are searching for answers. This is what defines and this is God's blueprint in transforming our history and making our life meaningful. Because people of God a good and faithful servant is one who shows humility, who is not so much the most popular person in the world or so much recognizable or someone where they, the person who wants to just receive all the credit for their success, that's not a good and faithful servant. You see, a good 
and faithful servant is all about helping others. That's the reality. God wants to make us servants for him. Now listen, 1 John, the third chapter in the 17th verse, it says, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Good servants, faithful servants are disciplined for action. They study from the Father, his laws for success. They pray for discernment. They spend quality time with God because they need his power to operate in. And their worship is pure. They worship God, not out of obligation, but their worship is genuine and right before the Lord. And this is precisely why the Lord impressed upon me the need to discuss our life, our journey, in our time being here in this world. There's a scripture that says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17, it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16 says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, <laughs> but understand what the Lord's will is. And the focus that the Lord wanted me to direct our attention on is make the most of every opportunity. I want you guys to really hear this. This particular part of God's word, it says, make the most of every opportunity. You know, people have got a good book or a good movie or a good job or a good or successful relationship has to have substance from beginning to end. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to have God's fingerprints. Otherwise, we will never fulfill our purpose. Okay, listen, listen, let me explain. God's word says all of us are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Psalms 51 verse 5 tells us, yes, I was born in guilt, in sin, from the moment my mother conceived me. You have to understand, people of God, iniquity is gross injustice. It's all about wickedness. It's, it's corruptive. It's debauchery. It's depravity. It's immorality and sin is transgression against God's law for Romans the third chapter in the 23rd verse says it didn't, it didn't say some have sinned it says all have sinned and fall short of God's glory so because we have fallen short that's the reality that's that's the reality of our lives all of us have fallen short. And this doesn't mean that we can't rewrite our history, that we can create our lives in a way that will become a good read. <laughs> As God is working on your book, working on your life, God can mold and shape us where our past becomes 
a thing of the past. And he can activate something within us, within our lives, that moves us toward a higher calling that is consistent with the level the Lord wants for us to reach. Because there's levels, people of God. There's levels to God. (laughs) There's levels we need to reach in him that's called purpose. And this should be our story, our history. And the author and finisher of our faith is saying today or tonight, we have time. We have plenty of time for us to achieve what God created in us. And we have a great opportunity in these evil days to rewrite our story for the glory and honor of God. And so today or tonight's episode is entitled, Rewrite Your Story. I want to say that one more time, rewrite your story. Let's take a commercial break and we'll be right back with the episode entitled, Rewrite Your Story. History. Hello, hello. My name is Christopher. I'm the editor of Full of Life Ministries San Diego podcast. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. But I would also like to say that if you would like any prayer, any words of encouragement, or would just like to reach out in any way, you can email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Also, we have a Twitter account. Our handle is at fulloflifesd. And feel free to reach out. We would love to hear from you. And lastly, I would like to say if you like what you're hearing and would like to donate, You can donate on any one of our pages. If you go to any of our pages, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, any of that, there should be a link that allows you to do so if that interests you. That's all for me. So thank you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, we are back. And so let's get into today or tonight's episode entitled Rewrite Your History. Now listen, people of God, in order to rewrite your history, you have to, number one, listen to me, people of God, in order to rewrite your history, your story, your life, you have to place your faith in the author and finisher of your faith, which is Jesus Christ. It is so critical that we operate under the authority of the person who will finish and complete our life. But now listen, I want you guys to hear this scripture in St. Mark chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. It tells us, this is Jesus. It says he was unable to do any miracles there, except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Jesus was appalled by their disbelief. Then Jesus traveled through the surrounding villages teaching. (laughs) He's trying to teach us something today or tonight, people of God. And I want you guys to hear this. The history of these individuals are based on remembering Jesus in his early stages of life. Here, he was wanting to rewrite their history by providing healing for their current condition. He wanted to pour out himself into the hearts of his hometown, his relatives, and those households that needed unity. They needed stability, needed encouragement. They needed direction. They didn't place their faith. They didn't place their faith in the one who could rewrite their history. That's sad to say, but even in our situation right now, in the year 2021, we still have people who will not place their faith in Jesus. And we wonder why we still 
have these lapses in our story that we, we're not moving forward in God is because we won't allow Jesus to change our story, to change our history. Now listen, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. So people of God, let's let Jesus rewrite our history by faith. Listen, your miracle is moved by faith. Jesus is a miracle worker and he wants for you to operate in faith. Don't hold anything that happened in the past, but trust God with your whole heart and lean not to your own understanding. Let Jesus rewrite your history by faith because when you allow your faith in Jesus to be at the forefront of your life, Jesus is the one who activates everything within you. When you place your trust in God's word, because he is the God of the rewrite. So number one, place your faith in Jesus. Don't be that individual who will allow their doubts or fears to control their lives, to control your life. Be the one who will walk by faith and not by sight. So number one, it's all about placing your faith in Jesus. Number two, in order for God to rewrite your history, pride cannot block the rewrite. I want to say that one more time. In order for God to rewrite your history, pride cannot block the rewrite. Pride is always trying to convince you that you don't need help, that you can fix the situation. See, pride writes false narratives that don't line up with hope. It doesn't line up with a successful life. Pride will keep you stagnated because you refuse instruction. Pride keeps the taste of bitterness linger, lingering within your life. And pride, unfortunately, limits your progress. You wind up staying stuck in that mud of hurt. Your wheels are spinning because you refuse assistance. Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verses 16 through 18. It says, acquiring wisdom is much better than gold and acquiring understanding is better than silver. The road of those who do right turns away from evil. Those who protect their path those who protect their path, guard their lives. Pride comes before disaster and arrogance before a fall. Think about this, people of God. Many disasters can be prevented when you allow the Lord to rewrite your history because he can provide for you his wisdom, his understanding. The road for the rewrite is based on you turning away from those evil actions. You know what those evil actions are. Some of you guys do this weekly and daily. Some of the thoughts that come to your mind, you operate in these evil actions and now you're on the wrong road and now pride and arrogance comes in and now you're down. 
you have fallen, you have tripped, and now you're looking for help. Protecting your path is based on allowing God to create a clear path that gets you to understand and gets you to your destination safely. So think about the devastation and the many failures, the epic fails that have happened throughout your life. I'm here to let you know today or tonight, let God rewrite your history. So that's number two. You can't allow pride to block or to invade your space. You cannot allow pride to rule your life. Otherwise, you are now vulnerable for a great fall. And number three, lastly, in order to rewrite your history, you have to let go of the past. You have to. It's a necessity for you to let go of the past. Listen, with respect to devotion to the faith, this is Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi. He says, with respect to devotion to the faith, I used to harass the church with respect respect to righteousness under the law. I find myself blameless. These things were my assets, but I wrote them off as a loss for the sake of Christ. But even beyond that, I consider everything a loss in comparison with the superior value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. You see, I have lost everything for him. But what I lost, I think of as sewer trash so that I might gain Christ and be found in him because in Christ I have a righteousness that is not my own and does not come from the law but rather from the faithfulness of Christ it is the righteousness of God that is based on faith the righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death so that I may perhaps reach the goal of the resurrection of the dead. It is not that I have already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. So all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. Yes. And if anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to him or her. Only let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. That's Philippians, the third chapter, verses 6 through 16. And I wanted you to understand the apostle Paul had to let go of his past so God can rewrite his history in a way where he is now pursuing everything that pertains to life and godliness. So in closing, let's give Jesus Christ our heart and let's allow Christ to change the path we are on. Think about this, people of God. The Bible is the best-selling book of all time because throughout God's word, we find 
tons, and I mean tons of individuals, including me and you, have been transformed, have been washed by the word of God, about the shedding of his blood. We have been changed by the greatest author of all time. And the good news, there's more that he wants to change in our lives. So people that got, listen, listen, let Jesus rewrite your history. Because when you surrender your life to him, I'm here to let you know, I'm here to guarantee you, you will never be the same in Jesus name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your many blessings. I thank you, O Lord, for allowing me to share with your people this message of hope that you have given to me to change their history forever. I pray, O God, that you will bless your people, that those who have struggled through life, those who have been operating in fear, those who are worried about their present situation. I pray for those, God, who are in a difficult situation and they can't see no way out. I'm here to pray for them, oh God, that they will reach for you and that they will pursue you in every aspect of their life, oh God, that they will seek your truth because your truth will set us free if we trust your truth and we live in your truth and that we turn away from the evil things that causes us not for our history to be at its highest capacity. So I pray for every listener that's under the sound of my voice that you will minister grace and love that you will change their life right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, do a spiritual surgery on their mind, on their heart, on their will. And God, I pray that you will continue to just strengthen them for the task at hand. You have given us an assignment that can be accomplished. Help us to seek your face, turn away from our wicked ways, and help us to stay on course that you have set up for us. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled, Rewrite Your History. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that what the Lord has given me that it actually ministered to you. I believe it has. So if there's anything that we could do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. We are here to serve you. We are excited for what God is doing. Pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to do this in Jesus' name. God bless.